Hey everyone, Jim Phoenix here, and uh, I'm tired. But I'm tired because I actually watch these movies, motherfuckers. That's that's not special streaming demons when Jimbo gets through the movies. That's right. We've got none other than a bucket of blood from the last drive in the Robert Corman film from 1959. And then Box, you got Teen Wolf 2. Mean Wolf T O O. T O O. And we're tag team movies and natural born killers with none of us remember watching this shit, apparently. All that and more on an X Stream and Demons. Hit it. God damn it. Hold on. Is that the new one? Okay. I'm going with it. Oh my god. There we go. I don't know. I, I can't see my soundboard no more, man. You, you okay there? Yeah. Kind of like that sound. I can't hear anything now. Uh oh. Uh-oh. Oh, you froze. You're just like a smile. Oh, oh I see you blinking. I see okay. you blinking. Hey, Am everyone. Here? We're back. And I looking at it. I do, too. Welcome back, y'all, from our last episode where we discussed, uh, I think, just two movies, right? We didn't do a third one. Uh, No, I don't think so. I think we just, yeah, just did a, a twofer. A twofer. A twofer, twofer, twofer. That's pretty good. I like this one. So now we got three. A threefer. I do. A three for <laughs> it was a I'll I'll tell you I'll be honest it was my choice it was my pick natural born killer because yeah. I remembered it in the theaters yeah and it was it. I've never seen it before yeah yeah and we're talking about and, uh, Oliver John Oliver not John Oliver films John Oliver. Oliver Stone films no. oh fuck me yeah yeah or John Oliver films <laughs> whatever John Oliver Both Stone horror. films yeah sly. And uh, I will, I'm going to save this a bit for the total review, but apparently I did not watch that in the theaters. Oh, you <laughs> if did, I did not. I, well, what year did it come out on? Let me, hold on. Let me back this up. It came out in, these are the awards. It went a one. Hold on. 1994. Yeah, I was blackout drunk. Oh, that, that's okay. most likely the reason why I don't remember watching this. I remember going sort of and then probably seeing it on HBO later on going, oh, I watched this film already. And then that was it. And then that was it. That was the end of the story yeah. until now. Until now. And then I rewatched it until going, now. holy shit, all these people are in it. And then another one I picked just for you. I picked oh. A Bucket of Blood from Last Drive and Roger Corman's thing. A bucket of blood because it has smooth jazz. It's a smooth jazz color. Uh, that is scary. That's yeah. terrifying, in fact. Yeah. And and uh, just like I'm going to say How someone's name. Yeah, I know. I'm like, oh, my God, this is awesome. I think they would definitely love this one. But uh, apparently the person kills a cat in it, too. And you picked Teen Wolf, oh. too, just because? I picked Teen Wolf, T-O-O, T -O -O. because... I just wanted something fun and silly, and to be honest, I never even knew this existed. So really, yeah, <laughs> you didn't know the sequel that none of them, like, did any of the original cast members come back? I know it's like Bateman and uh, uh, yeah, Michael it's J. got Fox. Bateman. It's got, I think, some of the side characters who come back, like but, Biff, or yeah, Biff like his is. friend, like the yeah, basically, like the friend character is the same um baby yoda's in it baby the yoda's same. the same he's 50 years old yeah it's basically like hey do you remember teen wolf one um you're his cousin or something um and everybody loves him but they don't love you so do you think that that was a script they just held around and did it necessarily have to be a teen wolf too you know or just kind of like oh shit no, this made funny it was definitely a teen wolf too but also oh, a Teen Wolf T O O, not a T W O. I don't think it has that fame to it. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, we didn't want to get the sequel, the ske the squeakwolves, as they would go. Oh my yeah, right. god! Right, would, would the Alvin and Chipmunks make a Teen Wolf movie? How would you figure it out? They're all oh, holy shit! Did the eighties just have a big furry phase and no one noticed? 
Mm, I mean, no one was we did have there, Howard right? the Duck. We had Howard the Duck. We had uh, critters. Yeah, gremlins. Gremlins. Um, trying to think of what else we had. I'm Labyrinth sure with was... Oodle. Oh, oh, the rock collar fucker. Um, I mean that's Henson though, right? Mm. I mean, like that's just what they do. They just be doing kind of, what they do. What kind of furry troll? Which is kind of like troll. a furry movie because and troll too. I think they were I just guess. furries, right? I mean, they're they were just people. weird little gremlin-y things. They weren't really trolls. I don't well, know. I, ones, but the, I think anyway. it's a head and troll thing. <laughs> oh, Harry and Hendersons too. Harry and Henderson. Holy. Sh- uh Oh. Yeah. God damn it, box. I know. I <sighs> you fucking summoned this shit, man. I, I yeah, I, I did. I jinxed us this time. It was me. It wasn't you. It was me. All right, you're on there, Jim Phoenix. How are you? Yeah. So I heard you talking about my movie, Harry the Henderson, starring Tara Reid. I don't think that was a Tara Reid movie. I Fox, can't understand it. anything he's saying. It was Harry the Henderson's two Tara Reid. Oh, it's Tara Reid. Yeah, yeah, that so would have been amazing. They also did a T-O-O. two for T O. Wait, T-O-O. Are, you, are we saying Tara's Harry somewhere? No, 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 no. So, anyways, it was a Harry thing that went into the thing, and all I heard was, <laughs> "Oh, you fucking son of a bitch!" Nope, it had to come Maybe off. He's... We're not doing that shit anymore. Yeah, no, no, no. Because we do you... have Tara Reid coming up next week. We <laughs> I do forgot. not. I, I, I we... fucking. Yeah. We do not. Not next week, uh, next episode. So okay. probably too. It's like gonna be either right before Easter. Oh god. We should Easter do an Easter like episode. Soon. We oh. should do an Easter. I the actually Joe have an Bob. Easter screener. Yeah. Do you really? I do. Is it from holidays? Good pal Justin. Good pal no. Justin from Arrow. <laughs> Yep, and from a lot of other stuff. But yeah, yes. no, from our good pal Justin, he gave me a screener for a new uh, Easter movie. Really? Well, fine, fuckers. Then I well, got a screener fine. from uh, someone's name in a kill right now. Uh, Kier. Kier gave me a screener from The Hamlet with uh, Ian McKellen for Easter. Yeah. Is that it's Easter-y? It, it's got Jonathan Hyde in it. And uh, I think that's easier enough. Ian McKellen. Oh. I mean, Sir Ian McKellen. As Hamlet. I mean, you're kind of kind of stretching, but okay, There's, sure. You know, dude comes back from the dead. That's Easter, okay. right? That's the whole story of it. Is that Hamlet? Yeah. Well, Hamlet's ghost dad comes back to the dead. He's still dead by the oh, end of know, it. I, what Hamlet were you watching? <laughs> Hamlet of Ian f- motherfucking McKellen, sirs. It's okay. going to be the classic tale of revenge and tragedy directed by Sean Mathis at the S. You know, it's fun. We're not talking about the movies. No, because I want to get the plug in like without people knowing the plug for Hamlet coming on Blu-ray and digital 8th of April. So that's Easter. From no. Kaleidoscope, Home Entertainment. Hells yes. Mer- it's Easter's in March this year. Oh, it's in March? Oh. Yes, it's the last oh, week shit. of March. Well, then if you're doing it in March, you know what I'm doing uh, right for by, by the Easter thingy right there? Uh, Haunted Hospitals from T&E Channel Original. Season 5 is okay. coming out. I see in the screener. It's scary as shit. It's got kids. Easter kids. It's, it's a thing. It's kids. <laughs> it's got Easter kids. It's got Easter kids. Therefore, it's scary as shit. Yeah. Well, what what makes them, them Easter kids? Because... The, you know what? Honest to God, without spoiling too much of it, one's got a balloon. Why is that got Easter? Balloons? It's, no, it doesn't. It doesn't? It has eggs. What fuck's Easter again? I okay, don't what's Easter? think you know. I don't think you know. Okay, well. I don't, I, apparently you don't. I thought it was like balloons and haunted hospital season five on T&E and Hamlet through Kaleidoscope Home Entertainment at Ian McKellen's. Oh, fine, I'm gonna grip my screener out too. <laughs> We're gonna compare screeners, okay? Oh, trust me, <laughs> I, I got like Ian fucking McKellen. My screener is gonna win no matter what. I mean, it probably will. And plus, but... and truth be told, that mm-hmm. haunted hospital season five, the screener I got with the kids, creepy as shit. 
It's okay. Like, well, it's I mean, like kids the, are kind of creepy. Yeah, kids naturally are creepy, and um, like ghost kids. Oops, said too much. Well, I creepy as hell. Easter, bloody Easter. Easter, bloody Easter. Easter, and bloody Easter. How do you know it's an Easter movie? It could be anything. When a bloodthirsty jackalope starts jackalope. a fluffy oh, murder God. spree at Easter time. Yeah, I think I think I know. Is that one also starring Ian McKellen? Because that would be very cool. Uh, maybe. I'll have to watch to really find <laughs> there, out. There you go. Find that shit out. No, that sounds... That sounds cool. I did see Joe Bob Briggs tweet out something I was thinking for a long time. I've always wanted to review this movie for uh, us. And if you want to do an Easter theme uh, next time, we really could. Okay. Passion of the Christ. No. Oh, yes. Passion of the Christ. Wait. Not Temptation of Christ. Passion of the Christ. Wait. The Mel Gibson thing? Yes. That Mel Gibson thing. Because that's just uh, like a snuff film, uh, man. That, it's got mm, subtitles have... and shit. You like subtitles. <laughs> yeah, that gives me a lot of trauma, though. See, it's horror. You like gore porn? Oh, it is uh, fucking gore porn. And it takes all your boxes. It's, it's a it's a lot of a lot of stuff coming all at once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> coming all at once. Why don't we Why don't we watch Night of the Lepus? I think that was another one he tweeted out. I have no idea what which what it is. Man, it's Olympus? it's about you? killer. It's about killer bunnies. Is Ian McCullen yeah, in it? Um, no, but it does have somebody. I forget who, but somebody famous. Let me see. My, oh wait, uh, wait, wait! I know who. Who cares? That's in it. That's who's in it. Who cares? Who's no, in it? no. While you look that up, okay. I, uh, <laughs> this is actually. I was looking up side effects of my new heart meds. <laughs> Actually, same heart meds, but apparently just a bigger dose now. And I'm like, Janet oh, no, Lee. That, that's why I'm. S- Janet Lee? Yeah. Wait. Janet Lee. Janet Lee, like Bruce Lee's sister's. No, she brother. was in Psycho. She was in Psycho. Janet Bye Lee. Bye Bye Birdie. The original Psycho? Yeah, the original Psycho. Huh. Not the she original was very Psycho. Green. Yeah. She was Marion Crane. Oh, I don't know about that, man. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't know what the original oh, cycle. I think it just oh, had like one character. Oh, her. Yeah, Jamie Lee Curtis is her daughter. No, it can't be Jamie Lee Curtis is the daughter. Do- oh, I thought it meant that Jamie Lee Curtis's daughter was that. No, she's Janet Lee, and Jamie Lee Curtis Got is it. her daughter. That yeah. makes sense. Oh, I know that one. Yeah. I know the Lepus. Anyway. I'm still going to watch We're- Passion of the Christ. <laughs> I don't know, we don't know, man. That's heavy. I'll tell you what. That's I'll watch heavy, one, yeah. and then you watch that one, and we'll watch the third one. What third one we're we gonna get? Mm. What's a good Eastery movie as a third one? I think Hamlet, starring Ian McKellen, from Kaleidoscope Home Video. I mean, I got you know, I'm always up for Ian McKellen, so I could watch that if it's gonna be streaming. Uh, you know, April 8th, it will be. Oh, wait. Right. Easter's before then. April. Yeah. You can't uh, do it then. Fuck. All right. We can What's watch Roller good... Gator, I guess. Fuck That's off. That's a good man. Easter movie. <laughs> no, no, no. We ain't doing that. You know, for Tara Reed, what? I don't want to do Ouija House. Definitely don't want to do Mummy Dearest. Ouija House was good, though. What's a good Tara Reed movie we can watch for Easter? Oh, well, I mean, I don't like them as much, but we could watch. Um, the shark one, Sharknado. Sharknados? Yeah. Is there a res- I think there's one in space. I don't know, but I know the one she's in is like the first one. Oh, shit. Wait, 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 wait. No, we got a perfect one. I did not know what? she's in this. What? Are you fucking kidding me? The Crow Wicked Prayer? I don't know what the fuck that is. The Crow Wicked Prayer 2005. Wow. It must have been gone straight to fuck you videos, but. Yeah, it must have. Stars Tito Ortiz. Nice. And she's on the poster. Oh, man. No, wait, wait, wait. She's on the poster. She's actually in the fucking thing. She is. It's got David Boreanaz. Oh, good lord. Okay, that's the one. Okay, David Boreanaz and Tara Reid. Okay. And Danny (gasps) Trejo. And Edward. (gasps) 
motherfucker, we gotta watch this shit. And Macy Gray? Okay. I mean, I'm in. Okay. Sure. Fine. We'll <laughs> try to find this thing. We'll watch uh, Passion of the Christ, Crow, The Wicked Prayer, and then you're watching your Easter Bloody Easter, yes. bunny thingies from Easter, hell. Easter. All that okay, and more I'm on glad- the next Stream of Demons. But this Stream of Demons... <laughs> I'm glad that we got uh, our meeting taken care of in front of everyone. Thank you, everyone, for for being here. Trust me. If we're talking about this much about the movies we didn't see yet, uh, this might be a hint. Oh. All right, Box, what's your first fucking movie you're talking about? Teen Wolf 2. Uh, Teen Wolf 2. T-O-O. Yeah. So I, I remember it, using it, this movie as a blank and taping it over for wrestling. Yeah. To that's be how honest, good this one is. A good idea. The used, yeah. It does have Jason Bateman. It's his feature film debut. Is it really? Uh, so he just did it uh, is. not Facts of Life. What was he in Silver Spoons? No, that's the other guy. Um Valerie. One, two, two, what was Jason Bateman's first thing? Perfect Stranger. It, <laughs> it says Little House on the Prairie, but I Larry, don't remember no, that. Jason no, fucking Bateman doing Little House. It said that on Wikipedia from Jason 81 to 82. Bateman's. The Hogan family. The Hogan family. There you go. Valerie. So it was actually Valerie because then she says goodbye and then does the Hogan family. Oh, or wow. opposite way. I don't know. I don't Been know. A while. I didn't see it. So, but I did see this. And, He's, you know, he does a fine job. He does a fine job for what, oh my gosh, it was produced by Bruce Bateman. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, his dad. Oh, he did a fine job for. Uh, oh boy, it's, it's a family film. Good for him. It's a family film. It is. Um, it's one of those films it's where it movie. just keeps reminding you of how good the first movie is. Oh, <laughs> because like it's Passion like. Passion Christ. No, it's what? No. <laughs> so it's about a, a werewolf person, but he doesn't know if he's going to be a werewolf or not because he hasn't changed yet. Um, but basically him going off to college, it oh. has the old Gomez in it as like the headmaster. Really? Of Yeah. And they want to turn him into a boxer for whatever reason. They want to turn Does Gomez have... into a boxer? No, no, no. Gomez wants to turn Jason Bateman into a boxer. Like, like the dog? Oh, Huh? He wants to turn him into a dog. He's a wolf. He he wants to turn him into no, not the dog. But he does have a big dog that he feeds wieners to. Wiener wieners, like Van hot Wilder. Hot dog wieners, like hot okay. dog wieners. Hot dogs. Okay, it's so not wieners. Very strange. Um, but Gomez, he's having the, his best life in this movie, and I'm glad. Um, but they want to turn him into a boxer, and it's never really explained why. Probably because the first one, he was, you know, Michael J. Fox was good at basketball. Basketball. So they needed Things that start with something. B. Yeah. Beatboxing. So, that was three. But, but Jason Bateman only wants to science, guys. That's why he went to college. He wants to be science. Um, so he wants to be a nerd, but everybody wants him not to be a nerd. And eventually he does wolf out, um, and he turns into a massive asshole. Like, not even like charismatic, like Michael J. Fox in the first one, he was kind of like, you know, kind of right. getting to be an asshole, but he was still charismatic. You can see why. No, this is like straight up just a fucking asshole. And he, all of his friends who were, were not really good friends, but they're like, you've changed, man. And um, so he goes to fight the the bad guy. And is he going to wolf out or is he going to stay true to his science-ness? He also has a love interest God, who's into it, science. It. Is it a sister? No. Please say it's his just, fucking sister. It's not a sister. It's a love interest. Well, no, I mean um, like Jason's sister. Oh God! I hope not. I that don't would be, think so. it, is, it truly is a family affair. Look, Dad's doing there this. Like, Jason's doing that. But there is a professor that he has a lot of chemistry with, and it's very weird. Like chemistry, it's very chemistry? weird. He's a no, dude. like s- sexual chemistry. <laughs> so Wait, that, that, that was also kind of weird. Uh, because he's like, 
you know, supposed to be like 18, 19. She's supposed to be legal not and that. legal. Play ball. <laughs> still weird still weird so anyway it's all about being true to yourself or whatever <laughs> I, or whatever i don't know. so whatever, i have, I have I plenty of questions about this one now mm-hmm. so he the was, music was atrocious it was well was it fucking atrocious late 80s it had, was at least rock n- no it was like it was like synth music but on the oh. screen were people that were pretending to play violin and stuff. So it's like, oh God, you couldn't even get people to actually play violin and stuff. You just decided to synth over it. It was very strange. As one does. <laughs> There's montages. There's like four montages in this whole movie. And honestly, <sighs> there were one after another after another. It was like six minutes of just montages. Good. It was I, I like how wild. one have six minutes of montages. It was absolutely wild. Get um, the clips out. I mean, is one of the montages like the trailer? One of the montage, like, okay, so the montage is like him getting ready for like a big test he has to do because, of course, he has to fucking do a big test before the big match. So he's studying for the big the test, but then he's also like driving around, but then he's also like practicing for like the boxing thing it just like it goes on and on and so on and then Gunn. it stops i wish like you know how they do the <laughs> montage where funny. they do like twelve thousand yes. things it's only like one hour yes i wish but it was <laughs> literally that. and then they break there's a break they have a conversation and then it goes right back into the fucking montage <laughs> i'm just like what is going on is this editing or just kind of like I think it's just they're like, we need to fit as many tropes into this goddamn movie as we can. And also always rely back onto Teen Wolf 1. Uh, but do it worse. Do it worse. This is basketball team. We want uh, basket weaving. We no. want boxing. Now, so now it's uh, boxing. So that, that's, that's the thing because Teen Wolf 1, Michael J. Fox's character liked basketball. And he uses Teen Wolf abilities to play basketball. So this dude doesn't even like boxing. Has he ever boxed people? Like, say any mention of him boxing ever before? They said something about like they wanted to get him on a scholarship, but he didn't want the scholarship. He wanted just to science. So he doesn't even like boxing. It's not even a passion of his. And to be honest, like as I was watching it, I'm like, like when he wolfs out and he boxes, he's like almost killing these other people. Like, would not the other team be like, um, excuse me? <laughs> He seems to be a fucking werewolf. Um, doesn't that like the logic of stop it stop the rule? <laughs> right. Well, for, I ask because like if you've never boxed before, like what's going to be a scholarship getting the shit kicked out of you? That's going to go well. Bas- well, basically they want him because his cousin wolfs out. Like, okay, oh, so we need. I'll, I'll ask that. So they already have wolfing out as a established as a universal thing. fact. Okay. Yes. So they think everyone in that family is going to wolf out is the male gene. It could be like, wouldn't it be yes. funny if they did that to Jason Bateman's character and it turned out the milkman fucked his mom? So it wasn't he actually like the real cousin? Like just getting the shit kicked out in the boxing ring for no reason at all. Well, even in the when he joins, he he's never wolfed out because like his uncle's all like wolfed out, which I believe is the same actor as the dad in the original one and the dad's just like wolfing out in the car you know like no no business no no problem and he's like don't worry i bet you'll wolf out too and he's like maybe i won't you don't know that and it's like wouldn't that be a great movie if you just never did (laughs) i think that'd be a better movie (laughs) it'd be a better movie Uh, i think jason bait would probably think it's like oh damn i could make that movie now it'd be a better fucking movie (laughs) it would be hilarious um, it will be like uh, Team Wolf not. 3, but spelt like there for dyslexics and shit. Yeah, because <laughs> Teen Wolf 2. I can't believe they did the T-O-O. That's how you know it's good. It feels like a T-O-O. Yeah. It's okay. So you yeah. hate the music. You hate – was the acting okay? Like, the acting was fine. I mean, like, again, it's kind of like – um like say mannequin two or you know a sequel to something like that where it's like it's fine 
you know, um, it's not what the original was. Uh, and they're just basically trying to capitalize on the original. Yeah. So Jason Bateman did his best. I'm glad that it didn't kill his career. <laughs> no, it, so, he did quite well after that one. Yes, he did. He does our house and Valerie and necessary roughness after all that stuff. And yeah, so he did, he did fine. Um, like his love interest, she was real cute. Um, the teacher? Else was... His love interest, the, the chemistry No, the... <laughs> I looked at the photos. She was really cute. No, his um his girlfriend who has brown hair, and she looks real mousy. So does Kim Darby does have brown hair, or maybe black. Professor Brooks. Oh. Yeah, yeah, are, yeah. Are you actually seeing that really was the girlfriend? No, no, the girlfriend. Who was the girlfriend? I can't remember who she was. I think it's Kim Darby. No, it's not. That was Professor. But she was uh -huh. good too. She was fine. She, I'm not going to, I don't know if I should spoil it or not, but she, she doesn't it, sleep with him. She does. She doesn't, she doesn't that we see, but she is a werewolf too. She was a werewolf too. She does a movie with, oh, no, no, no. That's uh, John Cusack. But does she do a movie with John Cusack? I have no idea. Just like a random ass. Like it had fine, like they did fine with the. I feel like the um, the casting. It was good, but again, it was just always like kind of just weird. Okay. It now, was just really not that funny. <laughs> the casting, and I am correct. She does do a movie with John Cusack. Oh, okay. Yeah, she plays Jenny Meyer, which must be John's sister. Or something, I don't know. But I don't think they sleep together. Okay. Maybe. I, I Allegedly. Can't. Allegedly. <laughs> we can't. Uh, what is so it? how is the whooping out? Is it actually good whooping out? Is it makeup good? The makeup was fine. It was okay. Um, I just remember his, like, he was a scary wolf. He wasn't, like, he looked scarier than michael j fox michael j fox looked like a fun wolf like you'd want to hang around him yeah. jason bateman just looked like a scary like grumpy grumpy old wolf maybe that's what he's like, going you for you don't want to hang around i guess maybe but like i said as soon as he wolves out he turns into a huge asshole like right away he's just suddenly like a, a huge asshole like i said there's no like um charisma like there was with michael j fox where it's like oh you see him like it's more of a character thing of like him getting too big for his britches kind of a thing right um whereas this is just like oh i have this big test and i also have this fight and also i've been a jerk and i'm sorry and everybody's like hey it's okay and like that's conflict resolved <laughs> that's it well that, that's not that bad but I'll tell you what the tagline mm -hmm. to the movie was. Oh, a what's that? Hair-raising comedy. Mm. Rah, 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 I that's disagree. all you know. So how many thrillers would you give this? Awesome. I didn't. Awesome. Okay, so I didn't hate it. Um, Twelve. I feel 12 like Cthulhu's. this. I know. I feel like this would be a fun movie for like an '80s night with a group of people. Like, Oof. you know, having some drinks, having some pizza, watching something Zima. stupid. It, yeah. Get your Zima Get out. your Zima. <laughs> Break out your red dog beer. And some Zima, <laughs> maybe some wine coolers have Bruce Willis playing, harmonicas. Boxed, boxed wine. <laughs> boxed um, wine. <laughs> yep. I mean, just have it. And you'll have a fun time. Ask me to wash my jeans um, tomorrow. So I'm going to give it two because mm. I didn't hate it. But again, it. It was very lacking. Yeah. It, it would have made it better. I think. Ian McKellen? Oh. I think that would have made it better. If you woofed out mm -hmm. and they did just like a bunch of orgy stuff, I think that would have been so much better. Honestly. Honestly, I feel like we're due for a Teen Wolf, like sequel, like not a sequel, but like a reboot. I think we're due for. Were you Wolf a pan going to write this shit for pornos? Is that one of the pornos you're going to write? Teen Wolf, double three Ds. 
I feel like Teen Wolf 2 as a would be no thank you. Um, I'm gonna pass on that. But I feel like if we had a Teen Wolf now, it's got hairy think- vaginas. It's got hairy balls. Oh, hairy balls could be in it. Jason Bateman's name already works. Still, <laughs> come on, it's brilliant. It's Michael it's J. Fox. Up. Oh my god. <laughs> Get all cast in there. Okay, that's pretty funny. But I think that would be kind of funny if, like, they did do that and, like, Jason Bateman was in there. And maybe <laughs> Michael J. Fox can, like, like I don't Daniel, know. Daniel, just would. randomly walking through yeah. it. Got hair on the palms. I knew I should have stopped. Two, I can... Or voiceover. Fuck. Voice. All right, you know what? I can beat it, too. I can okay. beat it, too. Not by much. Okay. okay. I am doing The Last Driver and Presents the Roger Corman thingy. Who's uh, we sponsored, but they apparently fucking forgot. Oh no! Wah, wah, wah. But that's maybe okay. next time. Maybe next uh, time. Maybe next year. Uh, I know, I oh, this is the last one. Ah, uh, there'll be a, the jamboree again next time. But I'll be like, oh, I don't know if I get this shit. In. I'll say I'll get it in writing. I already got it in writing last time. Then work out too well. Oh, but, you know, I'm out zero money. It's all good. Okay. Okay. I actually converted all that shit to a uh, trip to see my mom Bitcoin? for her birthday, anyways. So fuck it. Yeah. Oh, okay. I wish. Look, look what I mean, dot com. No, but I was, I'll, I'll be honest, I was kind of depressed when I didn't see our fucking logo up there. Mm. You know, whatever. Yeah. I guess I should know better. Yeah. All right. So, and I didn't know better. Don't worry. It's kind of like there's no way in hell they're actually doing this for real. Thank you, Johnny Stewart, for telling me that long time ago. So, a uh, bucket of blood. And yeah. this one has got Dick Miller and Anthony Carroll. I thought you were just going to say, I thought you were just going to say Dick. It's got Dick. Dick. It's got Dick in it. <laughs> and Tony's, and Tony's and Dick's and Ed Nelson's. And some Julie, I don't know where Payne's voice is coming about, but we're doing it. I don't okay. know why. <laughs> And then we got this. Oh, I know why. Okay. Yeah, I listen to Brian Johnson. And sometimes Brian Johnson from ACDC will talk like this a bit. He's got he's a he's a Jordy. And uh I I figured it out it's it down a smile bit. It's uh take the accent out, it's actually pain. I'm like, oh shit, Brian Johnson is actually pain's voice. This is the oh. storyline from Michael Brook at Michael at everyman.demon.co see all cut UK. This is how good <laughs> your movie is. We got some jackass rando. Sorry, Michael, I don't know you. Uh, giving the IMDb up for it. So Walter Paisley, nerdy busboy at Bohemian Cafe, is jealous of the talented and popularity of its various artistic regulars. But after accidentally killing his landlady's cat and covering the body in plaster to hide the evidence, as one does, he is acclaimed as a brilliant sculptor. But his newfound friends want to see more of his work, so he starts killing people. I mean, yeah. as you do. Yeah, yeah, as we does, as we does. And huh. this is a set that we reuse for other pr- people productions like the Little Shop of Horrors. So this is pre Little Shop of Horrors. So oh. 1956 shop came out 60s. It's everything you think a Robert Corman Roger Corman. Corman? Be. Yeah, it, it's it's. Why, hey man, if they get my name right, I'll get their name right. No, Roger Corman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> They're probably like, man, we can't fucking. It's it's his, put, it's his twin alter ego, alter ego, Robert Corman. Robert Corman. That's how it gets so much in there. And I will say from the last drive-in with Joe Bob Briggs, I feel bad we blew off an interview with them. Um, oh, man, we did? Uh, yeah, yeah. I just, I was doing an interview for my book. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, I got, I got, I can't make that fucking time. I'm pushing my shit, man. And then uh, Kath, it was uh, sick. Kate was sick, mm-hmm. and so she couldn't do it. So I was like, ur, 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 "My bad." But anyways, uh, as watching it, it wasn't bad. I like hearing the stories behind it. I kind of do like the, as his brother Robert or Roger would say, <laughs> I forget which one was a fake one now. As his brother. Roberto would say, Roger's a good dude. Roger's a good dude. He makes movies that make money, but not by much. And he basically uses his own money. 
one of the things that was taken away from us, he doesn't pay people a lot, but he pays people. I'm like, oh, I can respect that. Mm-hmm. I can respect that. I, I think that's the whole thing. That's what we do here, believe it or not. Mm-hmm. And the storyline made me immediately think of you because this is a beatnik fucking thing. It's got some <laughs> shit going on. It's got the black and whites all over it. And the soundtrack is all smooth jazz. 100 percent this is your horror. Terrifying. Movie. It's it is terrifying. For you, it would be absolutely terrifying. I think that is correct. It is beaten the horror classics. And matter of fact, for the streaming demons, I think we're all doing a horror classics. We did whatever that horror classic was, this horror classic, next horror classics. I'm just saying that because it's easier to rank SEOs. Okay. I can't remember a fucking thing about the movie other than jazz, though. Jazz, oh. sculptures, and killing. That's all I fucking remember. And beatniks. Yeah. You know, beatnik horror was actually a thing. I mean, not a big thing, but it was a thing. It was a big thing for Dick Miller. One of the, um, there was, oh gosh. It was um a beatnik horror that I had seen, and it was introducing Dean Stockwell. And I was like, oh. Baby Dean Stockwell, just like this was baby Jason Bateman. It's like, oh, they can get together, so they can do something together and do some sorts of things. So babies, it's so cute yeah. when you see that. But I, I, I'd rather be watching that movie. I've, I have <laughs> watched some of Dean Stockwell's older movies, like when he was a little kid. I'm like, well, not a little kid, probably in his 20s, but it's like, my god, because next time you see him, he's like, he's like older, Sam Ziggy, yeah, yeah, all that shit. <laughs> So beep, boop, beep. overall, I like the CGI. I think it was very believable. Oh. Yeah, yeah, Wait, this yeah. is the CGI movie? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. hundred uh, percent CGI. It in... Wait, I thought this was in the fifties or something. Right. The early nineteen hundreds. Okay. What? No, they didn't Are have CGI sh- then? No. Oh, wait, what am I thinking of? I don't know what you're thinking. <laughs> but in Grandma the 50s, they did. Cookie. That's and damn not right. CGI. Nick McKee, that's what I'm thinking of. Gigamma Squeeze. No, it's that no CGI. This is before CGI. And honestly, God, I just hope they didn't kill a cat. That's all yeah, I'm thinking. Well, like, man, I hope this cat's not really dead. No, I'm sure they didn't. I'm sure the cat's fine. It's cat. Okay. It's a Roger Corman, man. I think he made it in a day. Or maybe they have, you <laughs> for know, ten bucks for ten bucks. About that, like today's money, <laughs> ten bucks. It, it made a hundred and ten million or ten million. Jesus, man, it made a hundred ten grand. But I think it costs like ten grand to do. Yeah, but he's got some money back. It, yeah, that's yeah, that's a good investment. Crank them out. It the writing is yep. okay. There's nothing wrong with it. The acting's pretty good. Dick Miller's great in it. The, the concept, I think, is fun because they're just making fun of the beatnik generation. hundred. They're just taking it to the next level. Like, what would the beatniks? Because, you know, a lot of beatniks were just douchebags anyways. Like, that, that's I mean, a fucking hipster that's, shit. That's, ev- that's every generation. You're There's not a hipster, be- are you, Box? I am. Probably. Yeah, I, with that hat. I do like your hat, by the way. That's a very nice hat. Thank you. But there's some things that you do. I think you said you identified right? as a hipster before. I, but I also had you and Evie com- confused for like 10 years. Yeah, you did. You really did, which is weird. I didn't sleep with either of you. Oh! oh hold on. And won't. All right. Anyway, what would there we you. Go. Oh, I can't even hear the sound thing. Where's the mm. kazoo? Was that the kazoo? Yep. Okay. Sure was. No, it's not. <laughs> the kazoo. That was a consumer right there. No, it's not. That's a lie. The you are a liar. Also. But yeah, it's, it's so you be a hipster. I, uh, there should be a movie making fun of hipsters. There really should be. There should. There should. I agree. I think that'd be fun. Um. So, uh, you said it was fine. It was yeah. fine. It was fine. It's Candyman the reboot. If you ever seen Candyman, the reboot of Candyman, it's that. But better oh. and like a hundred years earlier. Oh. oh my god, it's almost hundred years. Nineteen fifties. Holy I mean, shit, that's like seventy four years. 
I mean, yeah. I mean, we're not there yet. We're like halfway there. Good. Halfway? Halfway from 1950? Yeah. Yeah, because it's 2024. Yeah, yeah 20, 50 20, plus like, se- 74 years. Yes, I'm saying we're halfway to it being 100. Uh, well, more than halfway. More than halfway. That's, 50 is more than <laughs> Although it's 56. You know what I mean. So it, yeah, it's 56. It's going to be better. But yeah. it's it's fun. It goes by quickly. The If you like jazz, this is definitely your movie. If you like Roger Corman or Robert, it's definitely your movie. It's or Ronald. Ronald. All the R's for Corman. It's kind of a comedy, but I don't know if it's purposely a comedy. Did you just stab yourself? Oh, uh, no. My cat did. Oh. My cat yeah, stabbed kitty. me. Don't stab me, kitty. Okay. Yeah, cutie. She's I will cute. say this is... You know what? It's an hour long. Oh, that's not long at all. No, so three point five <laughs> Cthulhu. That makes it that makes it better. Or, it or makes it better because if this is if the movie is any longer, it would just like, oh, what are we doing eventually? But it's yeah. an hour. It's in. It's out. It's smart. It's it's the premise of Roller Gator. Roller Gator was tighter and it did it well. It's the premise of TikTok. TikTok tease, right? Oh, okay. If the TikTok piece was an TikTok. hour, a tight hour, you would love it. Yeah. But they yeah, had it, it would push be for two-hour bullshit and it, and it started slagging and, right there. And weirdness. Just like weirdness. But anyway, yes. I Okay, I understand what you're saying. Yeah, so okay. I, I, I can That's see this. Bad. I can see this. You and like Roger Corman's been in the business for like probably 70 years. Oh, or for a million years. Yeah. And I'll, I'll still see this movie. Seems like a good, good yeah. dude. I liked it. So 3.5 Cthulhu. That's my final. Okay. Now. now. We bring you to natural born killers. Wow. We sure do, don't we? <laughs> From Oliver Stone. Written by Quentin Tarantino. Starred Woody Harrelson, Although- Juliette Lewis, Tom Sizemore. Rodney Dangerfield. Oh, yeah, and, and and oh boy, Rodney, uh, Rodney Dangerfield. Robert Downey oh Jr. Which I did not realize that was him for like most of the movie. If you've, if you've never seen Robert Downey Jr. do a Australian character in Holy Tropic Thunder, cow. this is yeah. basically the same character, but without the blackface. Yeah, like, and also like who oh boy like <laughs> on coke like his character his character his yes. character his character like, very much he, he plays it really well oh he plays it very well yeah um but yeah this was so i'd never seen any oliver stone before um you're like oh we should watch natural born killers is like you know the the gateway into it and i've always seen this post like the the box when it used to be like mm-hmm. A box as a VHS. I'm that old. Um, so I remember just seeing the glasses. box. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, oh. And those glasses were very popular around that time. Like, yes. Very popular. I think the movie had, brings them back. Oh, no, it does. A hundred percent. Because, like, I had an ex who had those kind of glasses. I remember seeing a whole bunch of people who had that kind of glasses. Um, it was big. So it was like, oh, okay. Yeah, let's... Let's watch that because I thought it was going to be something more like, um, oh shoot, I did not, I didn't realize what it was going to be. Like I did not realize it's going to be all this. <laughs> no, I thought it was going to be like, um, I'm trying to think of the one that uh, Daryl is in from way back in the day. They're both Darryl, Irish and Daryl and my, my, my what Bob Newhart Daryl. No, no, no. In The Walking Dead. Walking Dead? Oh, uh, not there. Oh, I, I, I got the guy's face in my mind. Yeah, now, that's okay. It's got a bunch of fucking people in it, man. It's got a bunch of people in it. It does. It's it got has. Tom Sizemore in it. It's Eden McClurg. 
Tommy Lee Jones. Oh, that's right. And Tommy again, Lee Jones. That's what I forgot. Tommy you know. Lee Jones as like <laughs> I mean, everybody brings their A game and above. They really do. They really do. They Rodney are like, Dangerfield was fucking phenomenal in it. Oh my god, Rodney Dangerfield! That was a very big choice that he made to accept that role. That was a really big choice, and I think he did it with a lot of. He went for it. He went for it. Well, you know, he and went for it. He, I'm not going to do the voice. He went for it yeah. because he was raped as a kid. Oh, God. Really? Yeah. I for did not money. know that. Yeah, <laughs> for money, dude. And so Holy when shit. He, it, was, it was incestuous a bit. And so when he's doing the incestuous thing with her, it's almost like self-therapy. Like, I don't think he's like channeling the fucking asshole, basically. By the way, yeah, we're going to put a trigger warning on this. Ah, rape too late is for not that our shit, sponsor. Man. Yeah. Rape is not our sponsor, but... Jimbo is fucking lazy. But it's it's a lot. I And I did not realize it was going to be... But it's a perfect time capsule of, like, the 90s. And in that era of, like, violence and sexuality. And also just anger at the status quo. And so it really... It felt very Tarantino. It was written by him, but he tried to... I guess it was rewritten and supposedly you tried to get his name off of it, but it's very controversial, but also in the fact that it was like, I don't know. It's seeing it from today's lens, which is kind of weird. Dicks today. I think because the media makes them stars. It It glorifies these. They're not really so they're serial killers, but they're basically assholes. But they're glorified, so it makes them stars, where we see that on the internet now. Mm -hmm. We see assholes become stars on the internet because people keep fucking clicking this shit. Well, and it talks to you about... Are you dehydrated from your teen wolfing out? Boy, we got a flavor for you. Harry balls. (laughs) Liquidiv.com, though. Kidding. But yeah, I think it predicts it. I Honestly, God, I think this predicts a lot of the internet fame shit that's happening, man. I don't think it so much predicts it as it sees that it was a trend. You know, I think um, serial killers have always been widely publicized, widely, ro- you know, romanticized in a way. Right. Um, Bonnie you know, and Clyde. Yeah. Although and not that's, serial killers, fucking psychopaths. Yeah, and I feel like this is what it was trying to kind of envision is like Bonnie and Clyde to the fucking extreme. Right. Um, It's supposedly a romance. I think it is a romance. I can see it as a romance. Woody Harrison and Julie Lewis, they are fucking thick and thin. That's right. That's the definition of ride and die. I don't care about Thelma and Louise. Harrison and Lewis, ride and die. Mallory and Mickey. Yeah. And a lot of motherfucking dying, too. There was. Some riding. Um, I mean, it was it was basically kind of like two, two psychos in love kind of a thing. Going back to, like, the movie Psychos in Love and also going back to, like, I don't know. It, it seems like it was um, trying to be what it wanted the kind of the Joker and Harley to be, if that makes sense. I guess like you know, how, I can see that. I can see that. Um, you know, she's just kind of crazy. He's kind of crazy. They're crazy together, crazy in love together. I don't think it's so much as a romance, though, because I feel like it's two very damaged people who are damaged together, and things could slip out of the cracks like there's that moment when he wants to include a victim into their relationship and she gets very upset by that uh, yeah again something about not being our sponsor but now you're bringing up they want to rape a woman they kidnapped right and that also goes back to her trauma you know and also it goes back to he's he's looking at other you know women and you know this and that, it's it's no longer about their relationship. Um, but I think every, 
Oh, I got to phrase this correctly. I think every <laughs> relationship has a bit of a lull. And I, I think he was just trying to get through his by, you know, rape. Um, yeah. Uh, hmm. So or these more are like, culty. I think it's almost like he was doing the cult leader thing at that point. I don't think he was doing a cult leader thing at that point. I think he was getting to the point where he was thinking, is this, you know, Mallory and Mickey or is this Mickey and Mallory? We well, talks about the Maybe. demon and winning in love and shit like that throughout the entire movie. Yeah, there's a lot of like metaphysical hubba jubba. I'd like to say, like, you know, they have, they li- literally have a fucking Native American. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I they mean, have Russell Means. Yes, yes. But it's the like, only accidental it is, death. Yes. The entire movie is the only time he's ever sad he killed someone. But it's, it is the whole, like, you know, he's trying to exercise the demons from them. Um, because they got, is it, I forget, did they get bit by a rattlesnake before that or after that? I think after that. After, because he thought he was coming for it. And then he freaks out and he starts, he actually does shoot the guy by fucking accident. He well, does. Or unintentionally he says, kills him. Unintentionally. And that was yeah. the only unintentional. <laughs> but again, it's it's the whole, I don't know. It. They did this in, a lot in the 90s where it was like, you know, like, oh, Native American secrets and Poltergeist and, magics too. and I think that's how I Poltergeist mean, Two starts. I think it kind of or is. It has um, it in the middle somewhere, I guess. It has it. I mean, it was very. That was just part of the times, and it's interesting to kind of look back on that now. This is um, some Edward Said. I would honestly completely scrap the first part. <laughs> really? <laughs> because I. Enjoyed the second part so much more. So after when they get to the they police were station, okay, after arrested, I would keep the first part because Tom Sizemore's performance is amazing. He becomes like I can, I can, I can catch a killer if I am the killer. Yeah, like he he goes off, he goes off. Yes. Like yes, because he's he's there basically to catch them. He's a police detective. He's also romanticizing them. Um, and romanticizing, like capturing them, but also being them. It's very, it's very interesting. Yeah, he tries to get with Juliet um, Lewis. Yeah, the again, there's a lot of rapey, dapey things. Um, she leads him on to, to, to obviously like pull a fast one on him. So there is a lot of rapey stuff in there, but is it unnecessary mm-hmm. rapey stuff? Is there any rape scene that says, uh, do you ever see any of them that were like, this is inauthentic? I feel like, um, I I just feel like the one with the victim was just weird, you know? Weird, but not inauthentic. I mean, that you're kidnapping a woman. I think it kind of was. I think it kind of was in a way. It's it's different when you just kill them just to kill them for fun. But that was a different. She wasn't killed. She was kidnapped, though. That's what I'm saying. It was different. It was a different MO. Like, if they were just killing, and he had maybe looked at one of the victims, and she would be like, what the hell are you doing? Like, instead of him, because obviously he knew knows that she was very hurt by being raped by her father. Right. Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> the character um, that Rodney played. Rodney Dangerfield yes. not Julius Lewis's father. No. No, no, no. Um, and that death scene was very. Although I feel like the mom got it way worse than the dad. Uh, the dad's yeah. was very quick, um, but it was really good and fish tank and whatnot. Which is weird um, because the mom was taking a bunch of shit from the dad too. Oh yeah. Like she was Absolutely. the the typical mom who took the beating as well. Yeah, it's but like, she didn't. She didn't speak she didn't, up. Was yeah, that that's thing. exactly it. Yeah, that's a typical that up. time period, mom. Yeah, the stereo. Um, but like I said, I feel like it was a bit unwarranted in that fact. Um, I feel like if they're going to play the love thing, like maybe don't do that because that goes against their mo. Their mo is just to create chaos and well, fast and like fast chaos. Is maybe kind they're of poly. The I. Don't think so. I don't think so. Because when they get married, 
it's very, very um, uh, ritualistic. Bl- blood ceremony, right? It's like blood it's brothers. A, yeah, yeah, basically. Um, and they and they get married together. Um, so anyway, yeah, the first part, like I know it needed to be there, but to me, it just was weirdness, chaos. Like I was watching scenes, and I'm like, okay, where are these going? Okay, that's where it Nowhere. went. <laughs> all right. Yeah, basically. And that was a very like, 90s thing. That was, yeah, that was a very 90s thing, too. But it was when we get to the prison, because, like, they get captured and we get to the prison. I think that's where it finally started to, like, become fun for me. Because it was, like, all, they had a goal in mind at that point then. And, like, how do you get to that goal? You know, how can you survive that goal? And who's going to live and who's going to die? And I did like the interview. I thought the interview was really interesting and fun. Um, But, uh, but yeah, so, and that's when we see uh, Tommy Lee Jones, who is incredible. Yes. And that's where we see Robert Downey Jr., who, again, I did not even recognize for a really long time until he had said one thing. And I'm like, it's like, it was like Oppenheimer all over again. I'm like, he said one thing. And I'm like, holy shit, oh that's Robert gosh. Downey Jr. Howdy, <laughs> Jay. So, so yeah. Um, it ended, it, it ended kind of where I thought it was going to end. Um, and, and, and that, that that was a movie that I watched. Okay. Now, because mm-hmm. you don't remember. You don't remember watching this before. You never watched it before. Which was it? I've never watched it. I've okay. never watched this before. Because I didn't remember why. I knew I watched it. But then we were going through the people and they're like, that motherfucker's in it? Really? What the hell? That's another, another one? Huh. Huh. Who knew? I will say. That this does time capsule the shit that we watched in the mid nineties pretty well. It made yeah. fashions. It may or may not made Quentin Tarantino's career, you know, right or wrong. Let's see, Quentin Tarantino. What movie did he do before and after? Um, I'm looking. So he did his Pulp Fiction right before, and Reservoir Dogs. Reservoir Dogs, yeah. Back, but only and, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then Pulp Fiction, boom, yeah, really big. And then Natural and then Born Jackie Killers. Brown. So yeah. he does Pulp Fiction and Natural Born Killers come on the same fucking year. Yeah, that's a big one. That's a big thing. Yeah, and then Dust of Dawn's, Jackie Brown's come out a little bit later. So again, Kill Bills, of course. Yeah. And again, like, I don't know, Pulp Fiction had a lot of the same, I mean, not the same message, but a lot of the same style, but it felt more substantive, substantial than the, well, Natural Pulp Born Fiction Killers. was the interrelated stories going to each other. And this is exactly. going to be more, it's still one story, but because of the amount of drugs and we see the lensing through it, it, it gets a little bit disjointed of it. And I, and I think the reason why, and this could, I could be wrong, but the reason why I think you like the movie when it goes into the prison. I think this, I mean, you said it because of the structure, right? Yeah. I think the structure changes because it's one location instead of a, a road change. Yeah. So it, yeah. it kind of makes it's, it into a narrow. It, it does. And, and like I said before, like before that, it was like, what was their goal? Their goal was to kill and Mayhem fuck. And, and chaos and be that. And that's just be chaos demons. And then when you get to it, like you have a lot more fun characters that are there for the whole ride. And that, um, I mean, because Robert Downey Jr.'s character goes through a huge. He does a character like, arc. <laughs> he does. He does do a character a arc. Half movie. And, um, he, he does a fucking character arc, man. He does. And, and so does, um, what's his, well, the other guy doesn't do a character arc, but it is fun. Size to more, see. just because kind of. Size more. Yeah. Just get, um, just get into the mix of that and and again like uh it was it was very it was fun and again how are they going to get out what are they going to do you know like how are they going to survive are they going to survive the stakes were much more um i feel like 
just approachable and reasonable and engaging. Whereas like the first part was just like, again, just kind of like, yeah, yeah, we're doing this, we're doing that. Now we're in the desert and there's a Native American who's our spirit guide. Right. Which is how your memory works when you're on drugs. You're not going to remember everything. Yeah. Oh. Now, no. I'm going to blow your mind but, in a second. Mm, you ready? Okay. I'm, I, I think so. So we, we named the bunch of people who's in it, right? Well, we forgot Stephen Wright, the comedian Stephen Wright, as a therapist. So a lot, a lot that. of fucking... Uh, he was like, oh, have you seen Stephen Wright is going to be semi-balding with the curly hair? A little bit locky. Okay. I'll name the people we, we didn't see yet. Ashley Judd's oh. in this. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Ashley Judd's in it. I forgot uh, about that. What else is Danny Coleman? Right Barry Hardy. Mark Harmon is in it. And Boris, Boris Karloff's in it from archive footage, not actually in it. Yeah. Uh, who else? OJ Simpson oh. is in it. They had an actual murderer oh. in it. You're t- you're talking too about like some of the director's cut. Ashley Judd was in the director's yeah. cut. So it was Dennis Leary. Dennis fucking Larry, and but I can't believe they actually had a murder. Maybe Natural Bone Killers is actually about OJ. Allegedly. Allegedly about OJ, or allegedly he killed his wife and brutally murdered her lover, or his ex-wife and the, and the lover. I'm not sure which alleged about that is. I think it's interesting that obviously this was. It's surprising it didn't get the NC-17. I'm sure that they had to cut it a lot. Yeah, then it cut him killing his wife. (laughs) Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, To all the people that OJ killed before, I apologize. On behalf of society for letting him out. And, and, And we should probably talk about the controversy that surrounded this. Because it did romanticize um, being a killer and being cool and having cool yeah. glasses. Having cool glasses, the John Lennon glasses. Yeah. That and, he purposely and it, shaves his head for. And it supposedly did have some copycat crimes. Um, really? That happened because of it, yeah. Well, oh, shit, hold on. Was OJ one of them? No. No, you know that. Oh, because these, Mickey doesn't kill oh. Mallory and Tom Sizemore's character? Oh, Where's my kazoo? Uh, anyway, anyway, they they had there. had some. Um, thank you. They did have some. Uh, I guess copycat because again, I mean it. If you look on it at its face, it's saying that we are um, romanticizing these killers, right. but also it romanticizes killers. You know, <laughs> like I, right, spoiler it, alert, it's it does, proving us. It, yeah. It, yeah, spoiler alert, it ends happily. <laughs> like It does. Well, not does. for Robert Downey Jr.'s character, but No, I think for his as well, because he gets exactly what he wants. He gets to be famous. Famous. And free. Yeah, I'm not and, gonna even try. Yeah. I can't do Australia. Yeah. So what would you give? And we, the, the hmm. by the way, Leonard Cohen does part of the soundtrack. So, oh yes, I forgot about that. When it started off with Leonard Cohen, I'm like, holy shit, what is happening? Yeah. Um, because I, I, I did, I do love Leonard Cohen. R.I.P. Um, so the, the soundtrack, the oh, soundtrack, by the way, it did have a, a 17 original rating. Oh, okay, they, that they doesn't surprise me. Yeah, they changed it. Okay, off. so they did some cutting, as you said. Yeah, I'm sure you would have to. Um, I'm sure, especially for like the demon scenes with Mickey and and you know when he's demoning out. Um, the music the was good. Yep. Yeah. The soundtrack was good. Um, a good, a, a great little encapsulated, you know, time. Um, the the action was good. The action was great. Yeah, I, I mean, it, was, it kicks him. The ass. blood was good. Um, <laughs> the blood. I mean, the acting again. Like Woody Harrelson is such a he has such a large range of what he can do. Yeah, he was basically the goofball from Cheers before yeah. this, and now yeah. he's like killing motherfuckers. Like I can and tell people I don't do comedy no more. 
Yeah. A bunch of motherfuckers. Like, and he he has such a huge range, and he's still an incredible actor. So I'm I'm glad that he was oh. able to do something, you know, that was completely different. Um, different. Juliette Lewis, I I do love her. I felt like this was a little bit, a kind of a little bit manic pixie killer dream girl. Right. A bit. Um, I do like that she did, you know, have some agency and she could kick ass as much as he could kick ass. That was kind of nice. That starts off in the very first scene. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, I feel like the stylized bits feel dated. I feel like they're going to feel more dated as we go on. Yeah. But. Um, there were some good ideas with it, but some of them too were just like, okay. Um, I didn't really particularly like going from black and white to color and switching back and forth. And, um, some of the and, other like stuff. I, yeah. It gets kind of yeah. druggy sequency. That's, that's Oliver Stone mostly. I think. Yeah. I mean, again, it's it's a stylized choice. I just don't particularly enjoy it. Um, like I said, I think my favorite part was at the end. I feel like that had the most uh, energy to it and more of the, the comedy that I was expecting, you know? Right. Um, so, yeah, that's my thoughts on yeah. this movie. So that, that's not bad. I think if you like this movie, you really love – why am I looking at my own fucking book? I don't know the goddamn title. You really love know. Surviving Gen X. If you like this movie, you want to go with like Gen X, go to Surviving Gen X. Get it from Joe, Chef, Check. Go to Amazon. Who gives a shit? Buy it now. Steal it from the shelves. I don't care. Get some of that. Yeah, if you want another like encapsulated thing from the 90s yeah. that like – is is stylized as well. You yeah. can get surviving Gen X. Get the book that tick our book talk calls a book. I, that was very painful to me to watch. You know what? I'm gonna okay. I'll talk about this after the movie though. So I like this. I love the. I didn't love the movie. I love the characters in the movie. I love the acting in the movie. Everyone does a per- phenomenal performance. Phenomenal performance from everyone involved. But motherfucker, there's time I was watching like. Maybe like you were doing it. What the fuck's this? Yeah. Every once in a while, like what? I think I even took a, a fucking screenshot. I was watching the movie, like box. What the fuck is this? You did, you did. And you're like, I said, I'm, I'm just starting it now, and you're like, good luck. Yeah, it's like good luck, motherfuckers. <laughs> I'll shut up. But it doesn't match up to my memory. But again, I was blackout drunk. Uh, Simba or Kimba or Simba, Simba. I, I my think everyone should watch it though. I, you know. Watch it at least once. There are some trigger warnings you must be aware of. A lot of shit's going to go down. Read the parental guide. No spoilers there. But it's worthy of watching it. And I'm looking at Juliette Luce's movies before. California mm-hmm. of a K. That was a pretty fucking hardcore movie as well. Cape Fear. She, she another goes. Another fucking she, hardcore. Yeah, yeah. She goes hardcore. Basketball she Diaries does. happens after this. Dust to Dawn happens after this. She, uh, Nick's nuts, okay. Not everyone's, but there's some fucking chops in this, and this is really cool to see. I liked it enough to watch it again. I won't buy it though. <laughs> I won't buy it. I had to rent it. I did have to rent it. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, invoice me. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Sizemore. I mean, everyone does a great fucking job as a cast. If I'm doing acting and just acting. Five out of five Cthulhu's. But, motherfucker, I think you're right. Mm, yeah. Uh, and an hour and 59 movie, it, that movie's like two hours, the, non, the non-director cut. Yeah. You could probably do an hour 30. You, you have could. Have a tighter you fucking really movie. Could. And you actually really have could. the the less, let's say, less masturbatory scenes of just the self-gratification of we can suit this scene because we can. Yeah. It's, it doesn't really do much of the storyline. It's Joker and Harley Quinn, but with, I don't know, like 
brand new just too much trying to, yeah it's just like just i mean you could cut it down like you don't have to keep telling us oh they're killers and then showing us oh they're killers we we got it we got it in the first scene we got it right there yeah uh, absolutely beyond that it's just kind of like a, it's a chase movie that fought a lot of chase and yeah. then it's like uh, maybe they'll escape maybe they won't and then they hit the jail i wouldn't even watch this if this was a because sometimes like, well, maybe if they took longer to tell the story, it will be better. No, it would not be yeah, better. No, if it was a miniseries, it would, it would be better. tank as a miniseries. Yeah, like, True Detective absolutely. was great with Woody Harrelson, oh. is it? Oh, absolutely. Because it's a miniseries. This one I can't, just fucking can't do. All right. Yeah. Uh, so if we're doing this for reals, not just the acting. Uh, fuck, would I give the other one three, five? I think so. Three, five, six, seven. Three, five, four, thumb. It's better than the other one, but it's not a four for me. It's just not. I would give it a three. A three? But I would not recommend everybody to watch it. I would say if you're interested in something of like a time capsule of that time, if you're interested in film yeah. and how it progresses over time, I think that's a, a good place to also go. But to be honest, the story just didn't just didn't you know stick you know i would much rather say watch pulp fiction or watch jackie brown or something like that to to get i think a better story cape fear i want to watch cape Cape fear Fear, yeah it's been a while since i've seen cape fear it's weird to say this it seems like a movie that wasted the acting talent and yet the acting talent did phenomenal jobs (laughs) Yeah, no, so and there's like, a lot of movies that are like that, like Shadow and Fog with the uh, fucking Woody Allen. God, it was like such a horrible movie, but to watch Jim Malkovich be a black and white clown was like genius. Right. Like this, I mean, there's there's moments in here that are just genius. Like Tommy Lee Jones's character Tommy Lee. is phenomenal. Absolutely. Um. Robert Downey Jr.'s character and character arc is fucking phenomenal. The fact it's that he great. gets one. The fact that the every fact that fucking person one. here gets a character arc unless, like, maybe the parents didn't make because they fucking get killed early on. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty amazing to see. But it's, so there's yeah. some genius. Yeah, there there is some, and that's why I'm, I'm giving it a three. Like, I'm not going to discredit it. It's just, it wasn't really the movie for me. It's not the style that I like. Yeah. Um, but I think if, like I said, if people are really interested in movies of that time or in looking at film and seeing how film progresses over time, that's a good place, um, in the nineties, the mid nineties to Absolute, go. Absolutely. I think it's worthy of a horror cult classic title because that's, it's a cult classic, meaning it's going to have it in this audience. People are going to watch it again and again. They're going to be natural born killers. Like, oh, we have to watch it when there's fucking 16, 15, whatever it is nowadays. And then they'll forget about it. See, I feel like if a a teen were to watch it today, they would find it cringy. I feel like. I feel like they would find it cringe. I do. The only like, one way to find like, out who's got a teen who has to fucking do this experiment. But you know what I like? So teens. I, teens in our audience. Go watch it and this let us also know. The nineties where you could still sell cigarettes to kids. Oh and, yeah. Uh, in fact, you know what I kind of miss? Don't do that. Uh, uh, menthols. If I miss Virginia Slims and people smoking uh, marble lights, and I do know that sometimes we talk about sponsors. And did you know that quitting smoking adds twenty years to your life? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's smoking's not a great thing to do. Right. I feel but like where are we going? <laughs> my doctor was very pissed at me for doing that. Oh, for because, quitting? Or? Yeah, yeah. No. Well, I figured because of my heart and shit like that, it was short in my lifespan. So I figured if I start smoking and then I quit, it actually adds twenty years. So the heart's no, taking no, no, off no, no, ten. No. Yeah, and yeah, I quit yeah. Smoking, no, that's 20, not how that It's works. like a net gain of ten years. Yeah, that's not how that works. That's what the fucking doctor said to me today, too. God damn it. Yeah, that's how don't. math works. Minus Look, 10 of, plus 20. Instead of smoking, how about 
you how about you rehydrate yourself because rehydrate myself yeah because that's a much better uh goal to have in mind and you can do it at liquid <laughs> liquidiv.com.com.com i i hear teen wolf isn't ball sweat isn't i hear ian mckellen is really into okay just staying hydrated and fit hydrated and fit can't. We're spinning, yeah. we're spinning, we're spinning. So what you got for me for a thingamajigger? Oh, my thingamajigger? Okay. Your plug. So that's yeah. what I want to say. I'm getting it right now. Um, so there was Fandom Trump's hate again for it's I don't know what year, but basically if you want to go do it, it's already too late. Too bad. But one of the bad. places that I did donate to because of them is called pollinator.org. And again, that's pollinator, P O L L I N A T O R.org. And basically, what they do is they help um, conserve and uh, maintain like honeybees and pollen and making sure that we don't go extinct. <laughs> extinct yeah but they have like a lot of like um farming certifications that you can do they have um pollination partners and making gardens that are rich for um to pollinate to have bees come into and that's what they do so part of my money went to that and i say go and check it out that's not bad. and okay. world bee day is coming up world, world bee day, bee day. <laughs> yeah. i'm waiting for world double d day you know what i mean <laughs> That's the that's the day I want, Jimbo. We're all double D's. God damn it, pain. What about what about bees? Bees, bees are right. You know, I, I ain't picky no more. I don't think it pain ever was picky, honestly. I don't think okay. it was. Under- so it's the pollinator.org? What? Pollinator.org. With that org. Okay, that's not bad. I can dig D dig dig D's goddamn it, pain. <laughs> dig D's dig bees. D's. Oh fuck me. Dig these bees. Take these bees, motherfuckers. Let's go. And then for me, I'm going to push my what's cracking. That's right. We got Robert Beto coming up. We got Harker Jones. We got we got Chaos Comics. We've got Haunted Hotels. Well, haunted Hospitals is coming up. And I learned one thing coming off my press junket. You know what I learned, Box, coming off my press fucking junket? For my what book. did you learn after coming off your press junket for your fucking book? I'm really fucking good at what's cracking. You are. No, I <laughs> Holy agree. fucking nightmare shit. Ah. Oh, was it that bad? Some. I, I I loved all the all the people who had me on the show. I always thank them, and it's, it's all awesome sauce. And then sometimes you see other PR or other press go out about it, and I'm like, how the fuck did you do that? I, I like I had to reread my book for one of them. Like, what the fuck? Anyways, so I appreciate everyone who does a good job out there. And I can't wait to do Beams, B-E-E-M-S again. I, I loved you guys. That was awesome talking about some stuff. And it's all live. They do a live show. Oh, like wow. Beams fucking uh voice of indie does a live show. That's amaze balls, man. That's that's fucking that's tight. crazy. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I mean, we do uh, like a live show only because I don't edit shit. But <laughs> they well, actually it's not very live sincerely. because people aren't, you know. Besides Tara Reed or Bigfoot, same kind. Yeah, but they had callers. It was pretty wild. But I can't wait to d- talk to people from Haunted Hospitals. Is T and E Channel Season Five Haunted Hospitals? And I cannot wait to have a crack with uh, Kim there. Wow. Okay. Brian Johnson. Okay, where are you back. going? Yeah. Are yeah, the voice is coming back out there, you know. It's uh Brian Johnson and I can't I can't wait for Kim and Meg. I'm hooking them up pretty soon. Very creepy stuff. Go c- check it out. Season five, Haunted Hospitals. Check out Hamlet with Ian, Sir Ian McKellen. Sorry, Sir Ian McKellen. And that's gonna be of course from Kaleidoscope Productions. Pictures. Um, Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, home inter- inter- Glasgow home entertainment. I fucked that plug up. Um, Blu-ray. It's okay. You play hey, Hamlet. Ian McKellen. Go Google the shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Hamlet. It it's Hamlet. I mean, if you don't know what Hamlet is now, 
You should know. You, you should, should know. know by now. And uh, Ian McCallum plays Hamlet. And the first thing I heard about this, like, when I first saw it, I was like, how the fuck is he playing Hamlet? He's like yeah. 80. Yeah. But it, it works. Interesting. And it makes me wonder, like, shit, I can play Hamlet now when I'm almost 50. I, Can't wait. I really thought, like, he was going to play the dad. Dad nope. ghost. Nope. Ghost dad. Ghost dad. We see. Talk about, hey, rape is not our the fucking Hamlet. sponsor. Rape, rape is not our is sponsor. Not our sponsor. Ghost, I would no. much rather have Ian McKellen as my ghost dad. Oh, I have to say, I'd much rather have Ian McKellen than Bill Cosby? As my ghost dad. As your ghost dad? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Yeah. On behalf of myself, Jim Phoenix, my guest host, guest host, not co-host. I don't know, man. I'm tired. I don't know. Uh, Box human. Like, subscribe, pass it on. I don't give a fuck. All this and more on the next. Oh, Dreaming Demons. In it. Mm-hmm. Or wait. That's her outro. You already, you already did. Yeah. Oh, man. No, I guess we'll see you guys for Easter. Wait, we don't want to do the Easter thing? I'm serious. I want to see the Passion of Christ. I'll do a fucking write up on that shit. All right. We'll talk about it. I've already been banned from churches for my book. Let's keep the fucking good times rolling on that shit. Um, Churches and schools now, but fuckers. Yeah. We want to do and what we're what which one we were doing together then? We'll talk about. <laughs> we'll talk about. Oh wait, wait, it's the crow one with Tara Reed. Yeah, it's the crow one. I hear a cat. Oh. 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 Sorry.